Hi, welcome back for today's recap, and we will recap the movie, Inside. It's about a thief who breaks inside a high-tech luxury apartment in New York to steal an artwork, and must find a way to survive after getting locked inside. The opening scene of the film shows a luxury, high-tech penthouse in New York that shows various works of art. The sound of a helicopter approaching one of the high-rise buildings was heard, and a man named Nemo was dropped off at a penthouse. Nemo got inside the penthouse after some help from his team's hacker. He only had seven minutes to steal everything he needed to steal, so Nemo immediately started stealing and was able to take two of Sheila's artworks. He passed by a picture on the wall and looked at it for a while before going to the master bedroom, where he thought he would find Sheila's self-portrait they wanted to steal. But when he got there, he saw that there was no self-portrait inside the room. He then went to the video installation room, but there was no painting in there either. Nemo only had four minutes left, so he was told by someone on the radio to take whatever he got and go. He went to the smart home smart device by the door and radioed one of his teammates for the activation code. He entered the activation code, but an alarm blared throughout the whole penthouse as there was a system malfunction, and Nemo was locked inside. System malfunction. He radioed his team, who were also panicking as they lost access to the smart homes hub. The team's hacker tried to access the smart homes hub again, but when he failed again, they decided to just abandon Nemo. Nemo tinkered with the smart device, but it only broke the device even more. Not knowing what else to do, Nemo decided to just turn off the alarm first by destroying the penthouse's speakers. Once he finally got some silence, he went back to the main door and started chipping on it. Meanwhile, the malfunctioning monitor was acting up, and the temperature kept on increasing, causing the whole penthouse to get hotter. Nemo stopped chipping on the door when he realized that there was metal inside the door, and he leaned against it in exasperation. He looked for some food to eat and opened the TV to watch until he saw the live video surveillance of various places in the whole building. He went to a room and slept for the night. The next day, Nemo heard the sound of a helicopter and went to see if it was his contacts, only to be disappointed when he realized it wasn't. He noticed an injured pigeon on the balcony and watched as it died. The temperature was increasing, and the heat was starting to get unbearable for Nemo. He looked around the penthouse and noticed the square-shaped skylight. He pulled various pieces of furniture to the center of the living room to construct a tower out of it that he could use to climb and reach the skylight. Taking a break for a while, he was washing himself up when he noticed a mini garden in the living room. He pulled the garden hose out of the soil and took off the cap. Since there was no water, Nemo had no choice but to eat ice to quench his thirst and reduce the heat he was feeling. He then continued building his tower to reach the skylight. The next day, he was drawing and planning how to build his tower without it falling. The live video surveillance was playing on the TV, and he got distracted at the sight of a cleaner eating by the fire exit staircase. He watched the girl for a while before going to the smart monitor. He clicked on it to cool the temperature down, but it didn't work as the monitor was malfunctioning. He went to the kitchen to open a can of food but got his hand cut. He dipped his hand into the water to stop the bleeding and tore his shirt to wrap around his hand. Then he went to the fridge and started searching the freezer for ice. He laid his head inside the freezer for a while, crying as he struggled to survive in the smart penthouse. At night, he stared at the dead pigeon under the tree on the balcony as he ate. The next day, Nemo was trying to open a locked door in the kitchen. When he finally opened it, he saw various dog foods inside. Then he heard the sound of the garden hose sprinkling water on the soil and rushed to it. He drank some water from it and laid there for a while as he basked in the coolness of the water. Afterward, he took the bed and chair straps and used them to secure his tower. He finished building his tower and checked the skylight for a while before going back down to rest. Every time he is resting, Nemo always watches the cleaner through the live video surveillance, developing a slight obsession with the girl. He is always happy every time he's watching the girl, which he named Jasmine, and would get disappointed when the video surveillance would change to a different room. One time, he saw through the video surveillance that Jasmine was right outside the smart penthouse's door. He went to the main door and started yelling and knocking on it so Jasmine could hear him, but she never noticed as she was wearing an earphone. He went back to see if the girl had already left and was dismayed when he saw that she had. Meanwhile, the malfunctioning monitor showed the temperature decreasing and cooling down the penthouse. Nemo felt this, and he relaxed as he felt the cool air. He saw a picture of a group of people standing on an airplane and seemed oddly emotional as he stared at it. The next day, he put bowls in the garden to catch some water when the hose opened again. When the hose was done filling up the bowls, he put the saved water into a bottle so he could drink from it.
For the whole day, Nemo did nothing but relax as he listened to music. The next day, he made a makeshift shade and started spalling the skylight's frame. After a while, he took a break and talked to himself while he made himself some food he found in the kitchen storage. While eating, he was watching the video surveillance again. He was looking for Jasmine, whom he knew was also taking a break as he'd been stalking her through the security camera. He found her on the fire exit staircase again, but this time she was eating with another guy. He wondered who the guy was, before going back to spalling the skylight frame until he saw a bolt. He breathed heavily in annoyance and began the process of breaking the bolts. At night, he was observing the people outside using the telescopes. It seemed as if his mind had started deteriorating as he spent his days locked up inside the smart penthouse, with no one to talk to and nothing to do besides trying to survive every day. It was getting colder now, so Nemo tried fixing the monitor to control the temperature before the cold got worse, but to no avail. He also noticed that his radio was running out of battery power, and was disappointed to know that his supposed friends were never going to help him again. The next day, he opened his eyes and noticed something odd on the wall. He drew a circle around the strange part of the wall and went to break the bolts of the skylight frame. During his break, he watched Jasmine again. Afterward, he saw a pigeon on the balcony and talked to it. He told the pigeon to go to his friend Danny and tell him that Nemo is stuck in a penthouse, so he could help him. Nemo chuckled and screamed at the pigeon as if it could understand him. Nemo also started messing with the picture frame of the penthouse owners and looked through the closet in the master bedroom. While he was in the closet, he noticed a green light seeping through the closet wall and peeked through the partition. He opened it and walked through a very tight hallway. He reached the other side of the tight hallway, and there he found the self-portrait he'd been looking for. He turned his head to look around the room and ran away as fast as he could through the tight hallway when he saw something that frightened him almost to death. He calmed down and went back into the secret room, where the words, the unseen world, were formed on the wall. He approached the body lying on a stone table-like bed in the middle of the dark room. He touched it, squished it, and realized it was just a dummy. He hit the dummy in the head, quite frustrated that he got scared by it, and held the small box he found on top of the body. He pushed the dummy off the table-like bed and opened the box, realizing it was the compilation of, the marriage of heaven and hell. He took both the collage and the self-portrait before leaving the secret room. He approached a painting and was seemingly afraid as he looked at it. That night, he tried to draw and copy the painting on the wall. He looked at the surveillance camera and saw Jasmine sitting just outside the penthouse's main door. He started hitting the door and yelling to gain Jasmine's attention. He even attempted to slip a piece of paper underneath the door but couldn't, so he went back to hitting the door, yelling for Jasmine to help him and get him out of there. But his screams for help went futile, as Jasmine still couldn't hear him despite not wearing earphones this time. The penthouse was very secure, sealed, and no one could hear him inside no matter how much noise he made. That night, Nemo was sleeping and dreaming. He dreamt that he was in an art gallery. In his dream, he approached the owner of the penthouse and talked to him when he noticed Jasmine standing nearby. The man excused himself and walked towards Jasmine, whispering something in her ear. The man then stood up to introduce the puppet. The penthouse owner started talking about how humans are just puppets controlled by unseen hands. Nemo walked away from the crowd and left the art gallery. He went up the stairs, which then transitioned into the penthouse, which showed that the main door was finally opened. Nemo woke up and walked in front of an aquarium. The next series of scenes in the film showed Nemo going through the motions. Making a wooden wrench to take the bolts off the skylight frame, observing the fish, catching it and letting it die out of water, drawing an eye on the wall and a spiral around it, talking to himself in an animated way, drawing, chopping the dead fish to bits, rocking on the chair, eating the fish, removing the bolts one by one, this and that again and again. It portrays the deterioration of Nemo's mind. Nemo, who was slowly losing himself and going crazy by the minute, one day lay watching Jasmine again through the security camera. Jasmine looked at the camera, and Nemo made himself believe that she looked at him, that she saw him. Nemo had pulled the mini garden to the center of the living room and shook the tree to brush it against the skylight. He took a dump on the pool he had already emptied out of water and ate dog food at night. One day, Nemo sat in front of his drawings on the wall, dressed in a strange outfit and muttering to himself. In the next scene, he was talking to a painting on the wall, telling it that he was going to set it free before pushing the painting down. Then he was working on the skylight bolts again. He was able to remove one bolt again before he made a misstep and fell down the tower of furniture. That night, while he was resting, he was looking outside as beautiful fireworks exploded in the sky. He then looked behind him and saw Jasmine standing there, watching him. Jasmine sat in front of him, silently staring at him for a while before she leaned forward to ghost her lips over Nemo's. 
Just like her lips, her hands ghosted over his skin, hovering over it without touching him. And just like that, Jasmine left, and Nemo laid his head back, knowing full well it was nothing but an imagination. The next day, Nemo limped in front of the mirror as his leg was still broken from falling. He was nursing the wound on his lips when he hallucinated about the penthouse owner slamming his head on the sink. It was actually just him reacting to the pain on his lips by falling forward and hitting his head on the sink, causing him to lose consciousness. When he woke up, both his nose and mouth were bloody. He looked up at the ceiling and sat up when he noticed a sensor. He saw a ray of sunlight hitting his drawings on the wall and used a magnifying glass to set the papers on a pan in flames. He created a torch and triggered the sensors with it. Water poured down inside the penthouse, and Nemo went to the main door and started screaming for help, assuming that the other people in the building would take notice. But it was proven futile, as no one realized a smoke alarm was set off in the penthouse. All it did was flood the penthouse and break the TV, which means Nemo can't watch Jasmine again. Nemo was seen lying down, reading the compilation of the marriage of heaven and hell. Out on the balcony, the image of the penthouse owner's daughter and her dog were seen standing and watching Nemo. Nemo was singing in front of the ritual site he created in front of his drawings. The ritual site consists of two paintings on both sides of a small makeshift table where Nemo put all the bolts he removed. Nemo wrote a message on the wall in front of the main door, so when the owner arrives, he'll see Nemo's message for him. In his message, Nemo stated that cats die, just like his cat did before, music fades away, but art is for keeps. Nemo apologized for destructing the penthouse, trying to make it up with the excuse that he saved three things from the destruction. The penthouse may have been a home for the owner, but for Nemo, it was a cage, as he was trapped inside it for days, struggling to survive and eventually losing his mind. So Nemo then stated in his message that maybe that penthouse was meant to be destroyed. Nemo sang as he climbed his tower again. This time, all the bolts were already removed, so he was able to open it. As Nemo climbed on his tower, the destruction that is the penthouse was shown. In the ending scene of the film, we see the tower of furniture that Nemo created, and through the skylight, Nemo disappears.